This is the biggest and heaviest transport vehicle in the world. When you look at it, it looks like it's stationary, but it's moving very slowly, and that's at a speed of one and a half kilometers an hour. This equipment costs NASA $144 million, and it's only meant to transport things from the rocket factory to the launch pad. From the factory to the launch pad is about six and a half kilometers. So who drives this thing? First, let me introduce you to it. NASA Crawler is the name of it, and it doesn't have one driver. If you want to look at it, it has 30 drivers, because at least 30 people need to be present for this to work correctly. All these 30 people are technicians and engineers. Two of them are in the control room, and the rest are outside and in other rooms to make sure everything is working in order. Each section has their engineer and technician, and when it's moving, they all have to be there. It's a dirt road as well, and you guys already know why. Because under all this weight, asphalt would get destroyed. This equipment never does a U-turn. It goes straight, and whenever it's finished, it just goes reverse. And that is why it has two control rooms, one on this side and one on the other side. Anything that has to happen in the control room, two people have to accept, and each of them have a button to press. And that shows one person can decide what this machine does. From the factory to the launch pad, because it's old, it has a lot of turns, and these things makes the job hard. Each wheel can turn six degrees, and as you can see, it's marked on the steering wheel as well. Turning this thing is hard itself, because the operators have to know what to do and when to turn before they reach the turn. These employees and this equipment is very important for NASA because whenever this crawler has a rocket on top of it, hundreds of millions of dollars of equipment is moving around and everything has to be done perfectly. The people that work on this are technicians and engineers that had to take a two-year course just to work on this thing. And in that two years, they learned everything they needed to know about the crawler. When this thing is moving, it's like a factory working. And that's because it has 70,000 moving pieces. The people that work on this thing, in that two year course they learn, if there's an issue, find it and fix it on the spot. Don't go looking for mechanics. And when a machine has 70,000 moving pieces, there is a lot that could go wrong. But when 30 people know a machine perfectly, they can figure out the issue very fast. What year is this machine anyway? It was born in 1965. Two of them were made by the Marion Power Shovel Company. This company used to make mining vehicles and they are no longer around because they were bought out by Busiris. And in 2011, Busiris was bought out by Caterpillar. The power that moves this is two locomotive engines. So there's two engines in each crawler. And this thing can carry 5,500 tons. 
NASA is very satisfied with these machines, and they say it has served us right since 1965. We just had to service it and do some repair. All the weight of this vehicle are on these tracks. They have to replace these things once in a while, and they put some roller track that is a lot better, or in other terms, it's upgraded. The engineer says this simple upgrade made this machine be able to carry not 5,500 tons, but over 8,000 tons of weight. But where are the engines of this vehicle? In the engine room. These are the locomotive engines, and each of them produce about 2,750 horsepower. These two are designed to move the machine, but there's a Cummins generator that gives the electricity and powers the hydraulic pumps all around the vehicle. Every time this thing needs to be started, every centimeter needs to be inspected. The technicians and engineer go throughout the whole vehicle and they need to make sure that everything is in working order before they actually start working on it. Since this machine is very unique and everything is ginormous, it always has to be in the right temperature. It can't get too hot or too cold. And that is why when they park it, they have to plug it in in a special powerhouse. And the electricity causes the machine to be ready at all times and not sit. How do they load the rocket? The machine goes into the factory and it's designed in a way to go under the rocket and they gently set the rocket on top of it. When the loading has been done, a very long journey of six and a half kilometers has just started. Just like we said, it's not asphalt and it's gravel and dirt. They set new gravel, and with one time of going back and forth, the gravel is all destroyed. That's how heavy it is. The breaking of rock creates dust, and the dust is very bad for the machines of this vehicle, especially the engines. And that is why water trucks have to be in front and get everything wet before the transporter comes. So how long does it actually take to go this six and a half kilometer route. If everything goes well, it takes about 10 hours and 30 minutes and it gets to the launch pad. They set the rocket on the launch pad, but there's still a lot of work left to actually get the rocket ready for launch. Most of the rockets that NASA launches is at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And most of the time, the NASA crawler is responsible for taking it to the launch pad. This is the biggest transport vehicle because it's a machine that has everything it needs. It basically moves under its own power. It doesn't need any external power. Some people might say no, the Bagger 288 is the biggest machine in the world. But the Bagger 288, unlike the NASA crawler, doesn't move under its own power. It has to get external power, and that's electricity. If the Bagger wants to move, it needs 16 megawatts of electricity to move. So for something that moves under its power, NASA crawler is the biggest one. 